Hello everybody! In today's video, we will discuss ZFS file system, its structure, peculiarities and downsides. ZFS or Zettabyte file system is a special file system initially created by Sun Microsystems for the operating system called Solaris. It supports huge amounts of data, combines the concepts of a file system, physical disk and volume manager, and offers simple management methods for storage volumes. It is a next-generation file system initially designed for NAS solutions with improved security, reliability and performance. Unlike many other systems, ZFS is a 128-bit file system, offering a virtually unlimited capacity. ZFS is an open-source project licensed under CDDL, which is Common Development and Distribution License. If you want to use ZFS out of the box, you'll have to install either FreeBSD or, uh, or an operating system using the Illumis kernel. Illumis is a fork of the OpenSolaris kernel. If you want to use ZFS on Ubuntu, you need to add the support features manually. But that's a pretty easy thing to do and it involves running a few commands. We will explore it in detail a bit later. But now, let's talk about pros and cons of this file system. Talking of ZFS advantages, the following can be distinguished. It has a simplified pattern of administration that combines management of volumes, RAID arrays and the file system. All you need to manage volumes, redundancy levels, file systems, compression ratios and mount points is just a few commands. This approach also simplifies monitoring as there are less levels to be considered. Another advantage is related to ensuring data integrity. While some data is written, its checksum is calculated and written as well. Later, when the data is read, the checksum is verified again. If the checksum doesn't match the read data, ZFS identifies an error. After that, the file system tries to repair such an error automatically. Also, ZFS is perfectly scalable with the possibility of adding new storage devices, cache management options, and so on. The copy and write feature. In most file systems, data is lost forever when overwritten. On the other hand, in ZFS, the new information is written to a different block. When the write operation is complete, the file system's metadata is updated to point to the new information. This helps to preserve the old data if the system crashes or if another unfortunate event happens. This file system features integrated storage options such as replication, the process of creating copies of data on multiple devices, deduplication, a technique for eliminating duplicate copies of repeating data and reducing the storage load, and compression is the option that saves disk space and adds more speed, as the number of bits required to represent data is reduced. Snapshots are consistent reflections of the entire data representing the form it existed in at a single point in time. And cloning is used to create copies of snapshots. However, as any other file system, ZFS does have a few drawbacks. When its storage capacity is used by 80% or more, the ZFS performance tends to degrade heavily, and this is a commonplace problem for many file systems. When the current pool eats up 80% of the available storage, you should either expand the pool or migrate it to a storage system with a larger capacity. There is no way to reduce its storage pool. You cannot remove devices of VDEVs, which censor virtual devices, from the pool after they have been added. Also, there are limitations in changing the redundancy type. Except for switching a single disk-based pool to a mirroring pool, you cannot change the redundancy type. Having chosen the type of redundancy, the only solution is to destroy it and create a new one, while restoring data from backups or another location. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you'll be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog, you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Now, let's explore how to install ZFS on a Linux operating system with the example of Ubuntu version 2004. You will need the terminal for installation, so press the key shortcut Ctrl-Alt to open it. Then run this command to check application updates. When the command is entered, the system will ask you for the root password. Type it and press Enter. For installation, use another command. Type Y to confirm the installation command and press Enter. 
it starts the software installation process. To check ZFS installation, use this command. As a result, the program's version will be displayed. Now you can create a storage pool with a, with a VDEV, a virtual device. A storage pool is a set including one or several virtual devices where data can be stored. A ZFS pool, also known as ZPool, is a top-level data container in this file system. It is used to create one or several file systems or data sets or block devices or volumes. These file systems and block devices are then capable of using the remaining pool space. All operations uh, in partitioning and formatting will be performed by ZFS. A virtual device, VDEV for short, uh, may consist of one or more physical devices. It can be a pool or a part of it, and it can have various redundancy levels – mirror, three-way mirror, RAID Z, RAID Z2 or RAID Z3. RAID Z is an implementation of a modified RAID 5. In ZFS, it is designed to overcome the RAID hole error, which often affects conventional RAID 5 systems. RAID Z1 requires at least three disks – two for data storage and one for parity. RAID Z2 should have at least four disks – two for storage and two for parity. Finally, for RAID Z3, you need at least two disks for storage and three disks for parity. Now, let's find out how to build a RAID Z system with a bunch of drives. First of all, let's decide which drives should be included. Use the fdisk utility to see what drives are connected and which of them are suitable for your purpose. Run this command to list the drives. As a result, you will see a list of drives with detailed information on each one. For illustration purposes, I'll show you how to build a RAID Z1. It's an equivalent of RAID 5 with one parity drive. Its design lets you use the array and have your data intact even if one of the drives fails. I have three hard disks listed as div sdd, div sde, and div sdf. I'll create a pool with the name zdata, and here is the command to use. If there is an error, you can run this command adding f after zpoolcreate. It forces the command. To find the mounting point, run the command dfh after the pool is created. Now you can see that the pool is mounted in zData. To modify the palm mounting point for your pool, use the following syntax. In this example, I used var slash p -L as a new mount point. Let's check the new point. You can create directories in the storage pool. For example, let's create a directory with the name myData. To view all ZFS storage pools in this system, run the following command. To see the configuration and status of every device within the ZFS pool, use the status command. To view events and eliminate issues, there is one more command. If you need to add one more hard disk to ZFS storage pool, you should run this command with the name of the disk that has to be added. After the disk is added, let's view the pool status. Finally, the last command that can be used to remove a ZFS storage pool. This file system lets you create snapshots of your pool. A snapshot is a read-only point-in-time copy of the file system created in a certain moment. You can create snapshots of whole datasets or pools. A snapshot includes an original version of the file system together with all changes made after creating this snapshot. In other words, it's a read-only copy of differences. For creating snapshots, use the command zfs snapshot, followed by the snapshot name. In this example, I used zdata slash mydata to create a snapshot. Use the following command to check the snapshot. The snapshot can be renamed if necessary. You can cancel the changes by rolling back the snapshot. However, it means you are going to lose all changes that took place after the snapshot was created.
To go back to a certain snapshot, run the command zfs rollback with the name of a certain snapshot. This will cancel all actions in this directory that were taken after the snapshot was created. This command will roll the system back to a certain date. When the rollback operation is complete, you can check the directory for availability of files that were deleted after the snapshot was created. Snapshots can be saved to a file and then recovered. Uh, which is perfect for creating backups or for sending copies over the network, for example with SSH, to copy the file system. The send command sends a file system snapshot that can be redirected to a file or to another machine in the stream. The receive command receives such stream and writes a snapshot copy back to ZFS file system. For example, let's create one more snapshot and save it to a file using this command. And then let's restore it with another command. Using additional scripts, you can configure the file system to create snapshots automatically and send them to a server with SSH protocol. As I mentioned before, ZFS lets you compress data automatically. Taking into account the computing power of present-day CPUs, this option is very useful, because the reduced volume of data means there is less data to be read and written physically, which results in faster input-output operations. ZFS offers a wide range of compression methods. The default option is LZ4, a high-performance substitute for LZJB, that provides faster compression and extraction in comparison with LZJB, while using a somewhat higher compression ratio. To change the compression ratio, use this command. Or even change the compression type with another command. You can check the currently used compression ratio with this command. The safest choice is LZ4, as it is much faster than the other options, while it retains a very good level of performance. All things considered, ZFS is obviously the file system to offer you a wide range of opportunities. Not only does it let you manage your data in a very effective and innovative way, but it can also recover data without interrupting your work, should an emergency situation arise. What is more, if there is a system error or failure, the whole system can be restored easily with the snapshot feature, so you will just roll back to the condition it was in at a certain moment of time. If you have any problems with loss of data from ZFS and RAID-Z, try Hetman RAID Recover. It will certainly help you recover accidentally deleted files from ZFS file system or access the data stored in a damaged RAID-Z array. This program will come in handy if your information is gone after errors, formatting, overwriting, or other popular scenarios of data loss. If you want to know more about recovering data from ZFS and RAID-Z, uh, click on the link below to watch another video in our channel. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck. While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments of the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.